Thanks a lot. Uh, 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 I feel like I, I visited Korean so many times I should uh, be able to speak Korean already, but, but I'm sorry, <laughs> maybe it's, it's one of my goals <laughs> to, to give a talk in, uh, in Korean. Uh, so yeah, yeah it's, it's thanks a lot for for your invitation. Uh, I, it's, it's a, it's a, I've listened to two wonderful talks, so it's, it's kind of perfect match, and uh, I will uh, play a supporting role of uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Miro's talk and uh, Professor Hygiene Choice talk. So, so if if you feel like um, uh, their talk, I mean, I I exactly feel the way like they 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 really show you some advanced uh, tricks, like advanced moves of martial arts. You can y instantaneously call somebody. Uh, <laughs> so what I will do here, like uh, to teach you, really the fundamental things. Uh, in terms of martial arts, it's like uh, how do you stand in steel and how do you breathe. And uh, that's uh, um, uh, more or less the regularity theory of uh, uh, elliptic and, uh, and the parabolic equations. I really mean that, really, really very, very, very uh, fundamental. So uh, let, me, let me start uh, 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 what, what uh, my topic is about regularity theory of uh, elliptic and the parabolic equation. Uh, actually, uh, first I want to, to say one thing. So, I mean, we, I heard we have like more than 70 people here. Uh, you, you guys are really interested in, in PDEs. And, uh, and, and why PDEs? Uh, 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 is is so important. I mean, that's basically um, the first important question. Is uh, uh, it's actually uh, I thought about this. It's it's actually the following. Is if I mean, it's it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, I was drinking my coffee. Then uh, what what do you see? Basically, it's like 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 you see. This is this is my my cup, and the in, inside is water, and uh, I ha I have my hand, like like hold, holding it, right? So, so so this really, uh, if you think about the temperature distribution of the coffee, it satisfies uh, two things. Inside the coffee, I cannot control it because. It's the control of the temperature inside the coffee is by, n by nature. This, this tem temperature uh, inside is by nature. But what else I can do is that sur surrounding the, the, the coffee, except where I hold in my hand, is, is assume the room temperature. And where I'm holding, is my body temperature like 36 degrees, right? So, so that, and I can easily change it. If I, when I, when I change it, I'm changing the boundary condition. Then no matter what, what is, the boundary condition I can easily change, but the inside is really the nature. But then they ask, what is the nature? What is the law controlling the temperature? Not only the nature controlling the temperature by uh, by a partial differential equation, most actually I would say all the fundamental law of modern physics they are partial differential equations. I think that is the reason why we we are so interested. If if you go go to engineering school, uh, you tell them that I'm studying PDEs. It's basically empty. Sentence because everybody in engineering, in theoretical physics, they study PDs. So, so it is everywhere. It's like like fluid dynamics, uh, uh, quantum mechanics, and uh, uh, about <laughs> pattern formation and uh, finance. You know, they all uh, partial differential equations. Uh, another example, say for example, I'm 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 talking here, right? So what? What do you hear? His voice, right? Then 
where is we satisfy a PDE? Let's let's pretend we don't know what that's that's PDE. I'm I'm talking the 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 bound the table. What do you hear? You hear the composition of of two sound. It has really fundamental consequences. Uh, I can talk. I can bump. I can talk and bump at the same time. So what does it mean? Is this means the wave? Uh, if you put all the patterns of wave together, I can I can take sound. I can also talk l louder. Then what louder means? I can ma multiply by a constant. As a consequence of that, just we, we do that kind of experiment every day. It means that all the functions of sound wave is actually a linear space, right? It's it's vector space. And <laughs> we know a theory by linear algebra, there are basically two ways to make vector spaces. It's either image or kernel. Right? I mean they are actually equivalent. I mean you can always assume a subspace is a kernel. Now, if it's a kernel, what's that mean? There should be a matrix. You apply the matrix to that function, it's zero, right? And that matrix is actually the PDE. Okay? So, uh, 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 that's, that's why. So, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me write that. PDE basically equivalent to modern laws uh, in sciences. It's a, it's a, that's why we, 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 we want, we are interested in them. It's really explaining things. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's the prediction uh, obtained from this differential equation is so accurate. It's just beyond the exper experimental means. It's so accurate, so you, you have to believe. It's, it's really the law behind the nature. So, uh, 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 let me give you some examples. Let, let me really talk about very, very easy things. So all this, uh, both of the uh, preceding speakers, they are related with, with, with this equation. This is, this is the, the heat equation. Then uh, it really controls uh, the temperature distribution here. And if I hold the, the, the uh, my coffee for a sufficiently long time, actually just a few minutes, the energy exchange is going to be stabilized. I mean, it's like, like, it's like, like the, the take room temperature and take my body temperature all the time. It's the, the energy exchange happens all the time, but temperature distribution will, will stabilize. If that happens, I, actually this term very quickly goes to zero. Then you see this equation. And uh, any so solution of that is, is, uh, is uh, any, any, any solution uh, is called harmonic. And that's the most uh, fundamental equation. And um, you would say that that's the easiest equation. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, let me uh, show you some of the easiest example of regularity theory. Actually, that's the zero line of regularity theory. The easiest. Uh, regularity statement. Which I will give you uh, proof later on, but 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 let me let me uh, write it down. So f uh, a Laplacian u say equals to zero in ball one. Then actually, hydrogen was uh, using this uh, one way or the other. Say gradient at zero is bounded by universal constant. Say say let me assume you say r infinity ball one. Uh, then how do you how do you understand this? D 
they are actually, uh, whenever you write it down, there are many, many things you have to uh, think about. So, uh, what C0 really means? And what's the best way to understand it? And, and what's going on in, in, in different situations? Here's, a, here's like an import one. And uh, 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 can we write the ice limits in any other form? So, so let, me, let, me, let me explain that one by one. So first is that li linear equation uh, has to have linear, linear ice limit. So I'm, uh, is that the way I speak s slow enough? I can speak slower if, uh, if that's good enough. <laughs> the mathematics is really easy, so. Okay, so uh, what's that mean? For example, okay, I can prove new, new theorem, and it's suppose that's true, okay? Then, let me call that zero, okay? Because it's, it's the ground estimate. I mean, nothing is easier than that. So what this sentence means that, I mean, zero line clearly implies this, right? This is equals C the zero u uh, l infinity squared plus one. Is that true? Maybe uh, uh, divide by two? I mean, that's clearly true, right? I, I get nonlinear estimate, which is true, right? Which is true. But the first thing I, I want to say that even some of these, they publish a paper, say, I get new estimate. Now actually, this implies a linear one. It's, they are e equivalent. So, so let me call this zero prime. As a zero prime is really nothing new. is mathematically equivalent to zero. What you do is the following. This, this is the easiest scaling. And I will, I will talk about this many, many times. Actually, uh, uh, one of the fundamental things of regularity theory, you have to understand scaling. And it's at the same time, it is fundamental to understand scaling about derivative, because the, the derivative and the PDEs are defined by scaling. So what is, what's the definition of derivative? You have to scale it, then you see a linear, linear function. That very process is a scaling. Here is, a, is another, another form. Suppose this is true. Then, actually, you can do the following. You, you can say f u l infinity. I mean, here's a ball one. Uh, a ball one equals one. Then what's the ice limit? Tell me. So zero prime implies that u zero less or equals to c zero. Uh, uh, this one, this one, one over two is one. Implies that, right? So means that whenever this this or less or equals one, I can do that. The harmonic function at the origin is less or equals to zero. Uh, less or equals c zero. Then this actually implies. In general situation, so this this I, this can be easily fulfilled by a very easy scaling. Is is you apply this to this is harmonic, right? You give me any harmonic function in ball one. I divide by his average infinity norm. Then this average norm would be equals one. Then this guy's gradient will be less or equal to c zero. Then, then that implies uh, uh, a fundamental estimate. So, so, so the, you, it's impossible you get, you get non-linear ones. So you, you say that's pretty easy. Uh, let me do another one. Uh, two. Uh, one. To ball R, or, or this slash is is how do you understand one? Or slash ball 
for one. As a physically, what is one? Is is one mile, or one inch, or one kilometer, or one light years? There's not any. Right? One is actually defined by hierarchy. Is the king's house is my street is one. Right? There is no one in the universe. One could be anything. So so mathematicians like me likes one, but there's no reason to think about one. So. Uh, even most, most theorems stated that way, but one, you shouldn't be, think about that that much. Uh, the correct understanding is ac a actually maybe maybe in ball r. So let me let me prove this. Zero implies zero sub r, which means the following. Did I call lemma? Okay. So f. Laplacian u equals zero in ball r, then gradient of u zero is less or equals. I mean, I'm really literally uh, uh, taking c zero is the constant. That nothing changes. And uh, there is a very easy way of of. Remembering, remembering it, and there's a much better way of understanding it geometrically, which I will explain. So, so first of all, let me show you how do you remember. The way to remember is this gradient. Gradient. This this guy has the scale of u because how do you define the grid gradient? Is a it's a it's a u of x. Uh, minus uh, uh, u of zero divided by x, you take limit, right? So this has a scale, u scale, whatever it is, divided by distance scale, right? It's it's a it's a it's a it's a uh, it's the way it is. And in order for the scale to be correct, the right hand side is exactly as it should be. It's u scale divided by, divided by the distance, and uh, geometrically, this this is physical because you know we 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 we, we the, the law of nature controls the temperature is actually here. You you always understand PDEs because of the that's the fundamental law of physics. So. So now, how do you understand the, the geometry? I, I usually draw those kind of pictures. Uh, uh, what does it mean? Is this? Is is? Let me, let me, let me do ball one first. Is 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 the 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 inequality zero means the falling. It really means this. Is that if you see the temperature uh, in the unit ball is bounded by by one. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, this is zero thing, right? Then the slope of the temperature at at the center is universally bounded, and the C zero is a universal upper bound. It's C C zero is independent of U. So 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 what's what's in your head should be this kind of uh, picture is that along the boundary, no matter how wild. For how wild you arrange the temperature, no matter how do you do it, you want to mess up the bound at the center of the harmonic function. And then this estimate says that no, 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 you you never can do it. There's a universal upper bound. You can make how big the gradient is at 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 origin, and the upper bound exactly c zero. That's what it means, right? So. Then, of course, <laughs> if you think that way, that's pretty easy to do. Is you look at 1D, simple situation. 1D, if, the, if on, the, on the boundary, say, 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 say how much jump is, the easiest harmonic function is that, right? It's like you just jump that way. Then the gradient is the height over the base. Right. And that's exactly that, and that's the that's what's 
how to you understand this physically is the gradient bound at the center exactly says they divide by that that's it and and this is the universal way of understanding it and that's the geometry of the estimate and and to prove this is one line but but of course is 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 i i really re recommend you to do this once but you are doing it you gain no, no knowledge the so understanding of it is much important than the proof okay you 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 understand the pde you trust it it is the law of nature is much more important than the mathematical derivation of the theorem but anyway i will do it so how do you prove this from here is 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 you really do it say you 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 write it in the unified situation you define this u sub r function like that now if x runs over all the unit ball the r times x running over all the points in ball r clear right r times one. then you can check laplacian u you are will be will be harmonic in in ball one now because that x running over the unit ball then you just write it down then the gradient of u r at zero i mean under uh, whatever the 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 situation is c zero l infinity ball one then everything else is is pure algebra this equals c zero u l infinity ball r and that by the chain rule right what is gradient of u you are at the origin you take a gradient of of this function the same thing as gradient of this function in x you get r times gradient of u so this like r gradient of u at origin boom that's the proof but this tell you a a, a correct understanding and what is the essence of this theorem as a consequence i would recommend that you understand the c zero not as a mathematical statement you rather understand c zero as a constant of the universe is that it says no matter how wild you arrange a boundary temperature distribution the gradient at the center can never go beyond a number so if you feel like make every mathematician proud that's what you should feel uh, you might think this 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 pretty easy but let, let me let me try to use this easy estimate to get some non-trivial consequences it's, it's already rather complicated for example you might wonder that uh, uh, let me let me prove another uh, Oh, wait, wait, let, let, let me do this say 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 suppose you you look at the 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 boundary distribution like that uh, then then there's a there's level zero then suppose that's one again uh, the, the the skill in you it doesn't matter it's like anything can be a one uh, then what is the worst boundary distribution so that it is still bounded by one you would say that uh, how about let me make the temperature distribution here like like minus one then you instantly jump to to there then become one then if i look at the picture from top to down then i can i can assume say here the temperature is minus one and here the temperature is one then, then, then my estimates tell me that the gradient there is less or equal to C zero. Then, of course, if you l look at the gradient of the of the boundary, uh, it's it will be infinity, right? I mean, because it jumps at this point. So, so this as as north and the south pole. 
would be equals to infinity, clear. It would be interesting to see I mean, it's, it's where you can get the estimate, say, if I, if I follow this line, how the gradient blows up. But you knew already the, the gradient blows up. But let me show you that you are, right now you should be very, very powerful. You can solve this kind of problem just like that. And it's very easy to do. What you do is, is this. Is whenever you see this estimates, right? This ball one and the center can be anywhere. And this one can be anything. And, and, the, and actually the origin is not the origin. It's anywhere. Wherever you stand could be the origin. You can put your ball anywhere. For example, here, nobody can stop you putting your ball there. Right? You put your ball there. Then, what's the gradient there at the center? I just said the gradient at the center is, is dominated by so how big U is along the center divided by the radius. Did I say that? I said that. And that's true. Right? So along this side, the so area infinity is still one. Right? And the distance is this distance. So it means the gradient at that point is less or equal to 1 over r. And that 1 over r is the distance to the boundary. Let me write it down. It's like, uh, so, so try to estimate. Actually, the estimate is true for all the temperature distributions along the boundary. You say, I only did the center. But no. So what you do is, is, is apply, uh, apply, uh, 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 zero or one to ball one minus x x I can do that right this is clearly inside the ball one for any x right you can that's that's my picture then what my estimate says I might I my estimate says the gradient at the center, in, in this case, uh, uh, let, let me re repeat my picture. It's like, for any x, then, then this distance is 1 minus x. Uh, that is center. That's origin. Then this is 1 minus x, right? Then I can apply my estimates here because it really literally satisfies all the conditions. Use harmonic in a perfect ball. Then I have a gradient of u at the center. Let's all you call c zero. Use our infinity in this little in this very ball. Divide by the radius of that little ball. Right? Then that will be it. And, and uh, this has the in inherent property. This list of C0 use R infinity for one act because that's a subset. So you see the gradient blows up like a one over distance to the boundary. This, this is the, in essence, that's, that's the distance. Right? So you know exactly how it's supposed to blow it up. Actually, if you want, you can also estimate and all observe, say, hydrogen talking about dipoles. You can estimate or observe how the gradient of, of all kinds of solutions of, of equations, how it blew up uh, near the pole of all kinds of so, s solutions. The, the, all the estimate is really an easy consequence of scaling.
Uh, the goal of, uh, of this course is, uh, is prove the following two theorems. The goal. And I will explain why they are important and, and, and why they come in naturally. Uh, first, uh, the goal of lectures. Which really is the supporting role of, uh, of, of the other two lectures. Uh, First, I want to define a uh, C alpha space, omega, is, is all those functions of at x so that u of x minus u of y uh, over x minus y to the alpha sup x y is in omega is finite. This code called the holder space. And, and usually it's, I take alpha uh, less than uh, zero, bigger than one. And the fundamental theorem is the following. This is called the Schilder theory. It this is the, it's Laplacian, is an isomorphism. between uh, C2 alpha omega to C alpha omega. In, in kind of a quotation mark, it's a, it's a, it's a, I have to fix the boundary conditions. Uh, maybe, maybe cross C2 alpha, the boundary of omega. This, this is the minor, this is U map to Laplacian U, U restrict to the boundary. Uh, so what that says? It's, it says that uh, I, you give me a function u, uh, c2 alpha omega at the space of u, so that the hydrogen of u is c alpha. So uh, 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 let, let me let me hold on uh, to explaining this. Uh, what that mean but but you you see if if you if you can prove some operator is isomorphism it's fundamentally important right it's uh, then, then the nonlinear theory apply it's just like a, how do you use implicit function theorem so what implicit function theorem says implicit function theorem says that uh, I give you nonlinear functional if you take a derivative you linearize it after you linearize it, if you see an isomorphism, then this map is local isomorphism, right? For any nonlinear map. So you can apply this to a lot of nonlinear differential e equations because it's isomorphism, then, 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 then you get it. Uh, uh, of course, I, mean, I, I will e e e explain a lot more, but, but, but let, me, let me first throw this estimate to you and give you some uh, intuition about it. So, so, so another one I'm going to prove is, a, is LP theory, which I think uh, Hygen and uh, uh, Mimura will, will use. It's Laplacian is also ISO uh, between W2P and the LP space. I, I won't write it precisely, but, but that's, that's the essence of it. So, so uh, uh, this, this here, I need a condition like alpha less than one, bigger than zero. So, so that's, that's the goal. So, so let me explain a little bit. Uh, 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 so geometry. of C alpha and the LP and why do we need them? There, there, are, there are a lot of uh, uh, explanations but uh, 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 let me try to explain. Uh, 
it's the easiest way to explain. Uh, uh, let me before I do that. Let, let, let me say the basic facts. Basic facts of C alpha. Um, do it here. <coughs> there are something not mathematicians like made it up. It's 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 something you have to do. Wait, not because like somebody did it first, then we have to follow. Let me, let me first try to explain that. Uh, if you don't follow other people's theorem, you hit it anyway. Uh, this is this is this kind of fact. So 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 one of the fundamental thing about say Laplacian equals to zero is U is scaling invariant. What do I mean by scaling invariant is that you look at the harmonic function in any scale, including the space and the way measure the temperature. This, no matter which scale you use, they're always the same. What's that mean? And including translation because they are, they are physical laws. It means the u of r x plus x zero divided by c is also harmonic. So if you put all the harmonic function in, in scaling invariant class, uh, 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 this this satisfies this this property. And uh, uh, more generally, you can actually consider a lot a lot more general equation size sizes for that. For example, uh, 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 for the for the equations of this kind, and 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 with with the, this this kind of conditions, uh, let me let me see this. Uh, uh, you also scaling invariant, not quite scaling invariant, but but if you scaling that, um, the new coefficient in a smaller scale satisfy exactly the same lambda and the lambda. You might see different. AIJs, but uh, the condition will be invariant. So in that sense, that that's also scaling invariant class, and the, and this also should be understood as if you. This means at each point, you can change the equation into Laplacian, but at each point, if you change the coordinates in random fashion, you get this kind of equation. So 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 it's still very close con connected to the. To, to the to the Laplacian equation. Then, then, then why why is I have anything with uh, with with this kind of a space? This called the holder space. It's due to the following effect actually. So suppose somebody prove a new theorem. Assume I want to prove the following. This is uh, observation. So if uh, one can prove Uh, a continuity estimate for a scaling invariant class then we can take the modular continuity Uh, 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 R to the alpha. That is C alpha regularity. This explains like uh, what what the George did, uh, the George Nash, Krilov did that. Uh, the fundamental theorem always hold it. So 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 here's a proof. Uh, it's actually very, very a funny proof. It's a, it has little mathematical content, but psychologically very, very important. 
Uh, what's that mean? S suppose some crazy guy say, say Laplacian u equals to zero in ball one. Suppose some crazy guy, instead of saying the gradient is bounded, okay, I want to do a lot of we weaker estimates. Suppose somebody say, oh, I got new proof. I can prove the following. I can prove u x minus u of zero. Let's say equals to some, some c1 plus log of x absolute value, say use l, l infinity ball, ball one. I mean, suppose you can do that. It's like, like this. This, this will go to zero, right? Very, very weak error infinity estimate. And, and very, very weak continuity. I, I, this says at the origin, it's like a logarithm continuity. But I say, this estimate doesn't really mean the gradient is finite. But at least, even with, I mean, I, I'm not using PDEs. This estimate implies you have to be holder continuous. So holder continuity is, is not something you can avoid. And just watch, here's the proof. Uh, if this is true, uh, let, let me just call, call that the row of uh, x, right? So row of x means that I and mean, it's a modular continuity means means this has to be here. Otherwise, it's not modular continuity. Then this means that since since this is true, there is a r zero positive. Say u r zero is less or equals half. It will be true, right? If it goes to zero, it's, you can pick it eventually. It's reach half. So so you you get u of x minus u of the zero less or equal half of use error infinity for one. Right? This this is true in in ball R zero. Now this is a harmonic function in ball R zero. I can and by the scaling invariantness of U I can apply the exactly this statement to here. Of course, I can do that, right? It's like I can do that. It's, it's nothing to do with with PTE. And I, and I, I get I get the following. I get the, uh, this this harmonic f function. I get u of x. Let me let. let let me do it like a shorthand. Uh, this means ball, if I shrink from ball 1 to ball r0, from ball r0 use the scaling, I can say ball r0 square would be less or equal to 2, two, two squared times that, right? Then I do the item on that function in that ball. I get this, everything is is scaling. I got u of x minus u of x zero r infinity ball r zero to the k. Let's say equals half to the k use r infinity ball. Then, then look. Now this should be your variable, right? That's the measurement how 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 big it is. Then if this you call it r, I mean. This, this, this number running over basically all the R's, right? If you call that R, what is the relationship between this R, this number and that number? Of course, this is the power of that. Right? This always actually equals to 1 over R zero uh, to the K alpha. And this is algebra can solve it. So, so this is r to the alpha. Uh, I did it other way around. It's like this equals to r zero k alpha. And then, let's hold the continuity. And then what is alpha? You can you can just solve this equation, right? And the k actually cancels out. Half equals to r zero to the alpha. 
and 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 alpha equals to like like log of half divided by log of r, zero, which is a positive number, by the way. I mean, you, you, when you look at consecutive balls, uh, you thinking that consecutive radius is the variable, and that you you get that uh, for the point in between, you just cheat a little bit. Uh, you don't cheat a little bit. You you just look at uh, either look at a little bit bigger ball or look at a little bit smaller ball. But in the long run, those kind of vibration changes the module continuity tiny little bit because you have a K. It's, it's, it's really doesn't matter. So 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 holder holder is really comes in uh, comes in uh, naturally. Uh, Okay, so 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 that's the that's the plan. Then another observation, I I also uh, want you to think about it, it is the following uh, uh, the geometry. Let, let me let me say uh, C C one. I mean I better say C one is a ellipsis because hygiene was what was talking about it. Uh, the following, the following thing is actually important. Uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, is one is say gradient u l infinity ball one is less or equals one. Then then that's 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 uh, 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 say uh, second is that u of x minus u of y. Divide by x minus y. So let's all equals to one for any x y. Uh, this actually equivalent to if I if I break all the inequalities, it means this. Let's all equals to u y plus x minus y bigger equals to u y minus x minus y. Right. And this clearly mean, mean that this, this is algebra. Then, then what does this mean? This exactly means this. At each point, so you you are you you are you are thinking u x x as the function, it's variable y as a parameter. So you fix y say here. Then this that is a cone with with opening forty five degree. It basically means that the picture of you at each point, you could draw a cone, large cone as 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 big as the domain is. Then uh, 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 use picture is below that. So 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 you see, you see this this actually both and above and below. Third, this um, consequence is this. U U X less or equals U Y plus X minus Y and X Y and the one two three they are equivalent. It's it's kind of amazing thing. This what's this mean? This means that they they all they all equivalent. This use gradient is less or equals one means at each point gradient is defined infinitesimal, right? What's what's the gradient? You take a derivative, very very tiny things. It's at each point you you, you can draw an infinitesimal cone so that the picture is is below that, right? And this is u is below this two global cones, both above and below, everywhere. Look at the third one, is you only have a cone one side. So this a wonderful picture is like like inside infinitesimal implies a global, global implies one side. And one side means two side, two side means infinitesimal. It's like <laughs> you, you have you have wonderful picture of 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 those kind of things. And also this should be understood as uh, all those kind of holder estimates. Should be understood and 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 you should always understood as 
what I, I say that here is it's by approximation theory is, is you want to say u is approximate by a constant and with error proportional to the distance to a power of d, d distance to, to in, the, in the case of ellipses it's one power and uh, and in in the in the case of holder, you get approximation is is by a, uh, 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 by linear function. Um, so I think this this is the this is the the, the, the thing you should uh, uh, always try to think this way. Uh, the first the theorem I want to show is. Uh, 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 maximum uh, principle approach, and and by the way, maybe maybe tomorrow I will I will tell you uh, where you can get the the, the references. Uh, the, I will I will put it on the web, and I will tell you tomorrow. So uh, uh, the the first lemma is this. I want. I basically. I. I hope uh, because it's five hours. I can prove every single detail. I hope uh, is the following. Sup suppose let's say Laplace and U. Uh, 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 let me first prove 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 this. This all equals to zero. Let's say mi minus and in in ball one. Uh, then. Uh, the soup of u ball one. It's less or equals to soup of u on the boundary. So this this usually is uh, understood like the like the maximum maximum principle. Uh, I I maybe are already uh, implied uh, uh, implicitly used. Uh, but what it mean is that this I call that. Subharmonic fun subharmonic and and if I say bigger or equals I call that superharmonic. And uh, uh, to prove if uh, this I I um, before I do the proof, let me let me first talk about intuition. Even in the case, I mean, the, even in the case, say let's let's look at harmonic. I mean, this, as if I say this or equals to zero, of course, equal zero is it should be true. So, so what what is this means? I mean, why the nature prefers that kind of things? Uh, that's hard to explain. But but what does that mean? This Laplacian u equals say for u x one x one right u x two x two plus da 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 plus u x n x n equals to zero. So so if you have n numbers add add together equals to zero, most likely you have some positive numbers, some negative numbers, right? It cannot be always positive, right? So so this really you see this already. Uh, some kind of balancing thing. If you are draw a picture, it means the falling is a, it's, a, I mean, it's, it's, it's impossible to draw a, a, a picture. It's, it means that related with which each of the tangent plane, you have directions that's supposed to say that's, that's positive, I mean you have a negative things. How much in different directions it goes up? Always perfectly balanced with other directions, it goes down. The add together is zero. So, so it means re with respect to each of his tangent plane, uh, the function is a saddle. Right? As a consequence, the function cannot be convex, or at least be strictly convex. Right? So, so, for example, you will believe this. So, so if something like that fails, what does that mean? Uh, it means that 
inside is bigger than the boundary, right? You, you have those kind of uh, pictures. The inside getting bigger. If the inside getting big, bigger, you can always find a point. That's like a concave, right? And maybe that's as hard to 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 find. Then uh, you 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 first draw a. If that fails, what you do is you first draw a hyperplane. Then the hyperplane will will touch to the point where it's a positive and away from the boundary. Then then you run the contradiction argument. And what you got is it just fails because um, uh, it's uh, this picture does not give you contradiction, but you almost get a contradiction. So then, then what you do? There's a, a famous trick uh, of mathematics or numerical analyst is you look at the picture; it's almost correct. Then the logic doesn't f doesn't uh, uh, help you. What you do is. You kick the table, you know. You 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 shake a little bit, and and the way you shake a little bit is that you put up this hyperplane, you bend it a tiny little bit, you bend, so that you bend so little the naked eye cannot see the difference, but you really bend a little bit. Then this bending, bend one like 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 the Earth. You land it to the picture. You hit the point. At that point, the function cannot be harmonic, right? And that's the proof. Uh, uh, there are other ways to e explain it, but by geometry, this is the this is the this this is the best. Now, uh, as a consequence, uh, I will have the following. Do you need a detailed proof? I've actually, that's a detailed proof. Uh, theorem 2 is f Laplacian u equals f in ball 1. And uh, let, me, let me think about the e easiest case. u is 0 on the boundary. Then u is less or equals to 1 over 2 to the n. Uh, one over two to the n. Uh, let's see this. So proof is the following. I mean, I can I can give you a very ab algebraic proof, but but let me try to do it as geometry as geometrical as possible. So, so uh, 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 what this what this means is uh, is uh, is if you make it uh, this is subharmonic, then then you basically you see intuitively this kind of p this kind of picture. But this kind of picture is is is, is sometimes wrong because this this is should be understood in in mean or slash average because it's it's not. Really convex, but but you 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 look at the uh, so 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 the more the more negative of Laplacian it is, you have a potential to to push the uh, solution down and and the minor Laplacian in terms of uh, uh, Professor uh, Mim uh, Mimura's talk is the is the is the force to push the solution down. Then uh, this has two inequalities, right? Let me let me do do one. Why this is true? It's quite uh, intuitive. Is you this this I can put a minus sign if I want. It doesn't matter. So so uh, uh, I want. This, this is the upper bound. So, so if I want to make it all, all kinds of u's, make the u satisfies this kind of, a, suppose this is 1. 
Then uh, among all the f with l infinity to one, then I want to make the u as big as possible. How can I do it? Of course, you just take f equals identity equals one. Right. So so let uh, Laplacian like like the biggest one. Let me call b equals one, and the b equals to zero on the bound. Then, then by by the lemma, actually you you get the u of x, this all equals to b. It's it's really by the by the Markson principle. Because after this all equals one, <laughs> then the uh, uh, u minus b is this all equals to zero. Right. However, this. If you want, you can write it down. Because domain is a symmetric, this one is a symmetric. So b is actually 1 minus x squared, 1 over 2n. Which is the, this, this picture. Uh, this is perfect parabola. And, uh, and, um, cannot be any other function. So the by Markson problem it's, it has to be less or equal to that. So so next lecture uh, I will use this theorem to prove to prove shorter estimates. Uh, uh, in terms of regularity theory, this is this is almost you can you 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 can get it very, very easily. And in terms of regularity this is not very good. Why this this not very good is that this I get L infinity estimate, right? This as a consequence, I say use L infinity. I can throw this one away. Use L infinity is less or equal to one over two n times f's L infinity. So, so, so says f is bounded, then u is bounded. The Schilder theory says if f is holder continuous, then then u should be second order holder continuous. It's it's isomorphism. You don't lose any. Regularity. So this is this is very very bad estimate. So 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 next would be uh, the the fundamental understanding of of the trick uh, 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 of regularity theory is is how do you use this kind of very lousy estimate to get the perfect one? The perfect one is isomorphism. This is from L infinity to L infinity in in the spirit. Of Schilder theory should be falling. If uh, if f is bounded, uh, 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 the Schilder theory says if f is holder continuous, then all the second order derivatives holder continuous, right? That's, that's that's what isomorphism means. It's 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 amazing thing, because this equation says that the, the sum is holder continuous. Then the consequence is that each of second order derivatives, each of the terms is is holder continuous. Conti it's, it's really, it's, you go other way around. But here is, a, if f is bounded, then, then u is bounded. It's, it's really, really bad. But uh, uh, tomorrow morning, I will show you that even with this lousy estimate, there is a way you use, actually, any estimate you give me, you can use Catopoly inequality if you want. Maybe I will do it in tomorrow afternoon. Is that uh, use that kind of lousy estimate, you can get the Pre-figured regularity anyway. Uh, uh, that's what I will do. And uh, and uh, uh, another thing I want to say <coughs> is the following: is that uh, the regularity theory, although it proves isomorphism, you should understand all the estimates in more qualitative way. It is controls of all kinds of physical quantities. It's, it's if I have a little bit of perturbation, then how you react? To this perturbation, the regularity theory actually means that. And if I, I, you understand the regularity theory that way, maybe there's hope to try to attack some of the problems uh, Professor Mimura posted of 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 a, a nonlinear diffusion equation. The essence of regularity theory is really controls of all kind of different quantities for the solutions, which exactly in the spirit uh, of all kinds of uh, mathematical questions. OK.
Okay, thank you.